All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. Check it out. We are going to be in Psalms chapter 9 today. So, hope you guys are ready for it. Man, I got a bunch more stuff done on my apartment, guys. God is really pushing me through this, man. My back has been hurting and stuff, but he is just... He just keeps me going. He's so amazing, man. I used to let things like that just stop me right in my tracks and not anymore because of him. He's so awesome, guys. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I want to come before you today, Lord, with a thankful heart, a gracious heart, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for continuing to allow me to push forward and to, and to build for myself this new life that is so wonderful, God. So much more than I could have ever known to ask for, Lord. I ask that this video, Lord, be purpose-driven to be able to go out and to really touch someone that needs touch, to feed someone that needs fed, Lord. Uh, allow us to all be dutiful and thankful, hungry and content at the same time, God. Lord, answer the prayers that we don't have the wherewithal to pray. In your heavenly name I pray, guys. He is amazing. He is an amazing God. He is so, so small and so big. It's just amazing. Just look at creation. Just look at creation and what he made for us, guys. And this isn't even, this isn't even close to what he really had for us at the garden. <clears throat> All right, guys, Psalms 9. Prayer and thanksgiving for the Lord's righteous judgments to the chief musician to the tune of Death of the Son, a psalm of David. All right, guys. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne judging in righteousness. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their names forever and ever. O oh, enemy, destructions are finished forever. And you have destroyed cities, even their memory has perished, but the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness, and he shall administer judgment for the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. When he avenges blood, he remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the humble. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from those who hate me, you who lift me up from the gates of death. That I may tell of all your praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk down in the pit which they made, in the net which they hid, their own foot is caught. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Meditation. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged in your sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Amen, guys. Man, David knew how to do it, didn't he? 
Thank you guys for letting me share with you, and thank you for joining me today. We are looking at Psalms 9, which is, we haven't talked about it in a little while, but it is an acrostic poem. And so, I don't know if you remember, but let's check and see if you do. An acrostic poem is first off common in Hebrew wisdom literature. Things like um, Ecclesiastes, um, the Songs of Solomon, Proverbs. Okay? So... An acrostic features the first letter of each verse spells out either a word or a message or an alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet, right? So, today's psalm again comes from David, and in its original context, Psalm 9, along with Psalm 10, were one psalm. You'll notice that because if you look over at Psalm 10, you'll notice underneath most psalms you have the title, and then you have the, the subtitle, Prayer and Thanksgiving for the Lord's Righteous Judgment. Then you have the very bottom subtitle, which gives direction to the musician and usually credits it to whoever it was authored by. And you'll see that Psalm 10 does not feature that second bar because it was, in fact, married with Psalm 9 originally. I just thought that was interesting. Um, you'll also notice that um, this psalm was to be performed to a borrowed tune, one called Death of the Sun. I didn't have time to really dig into that. Maybe we can talk more about whatever that is later. So let's look at 9-1. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. So, here translated as marvelous works, in its original text, the Hebrew word used refers specifically to to great acts of God. In sight of such a definition are acts like the Red Sea crossing and the very act of God intervening on Israel's behalf. Cases such as the Egyptian Exodus where our Heavenly Father intervened fully in human affairs. Something that later groups like the Sadducees would claim couldn't even happen. 9-4 for you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne judging in righteousness. All right, guys. So like David's verse 3, which was a statement of future hope, verse 4 takes us to the source of such hope. Our psalmist's confidence is not in himself. Rather, it rests fully on God's character as a true and righteous judge. 9-5. You have rebuked the nations, you have destroyed the wicked, you have blotted out their names forever and ever. All right, guys, so this is a powerful contrast. To be remembered no more is hyper poignant when held to the light that is God and his name, which will be praised forever and ever. All right, guys, 9-9. Nine, nine. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Here we have more clear poetic use of refuge imagery. Here, a refuge, other times listed as a fortress or perhaps even a stronghold. God play, God's places for protection and adequate comparisons, but certainly all fall short of properly describing the safety that is afforded us. By our loving maker. 9-11 guys. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. Alright guys. So this one. This verse is a reminder. God he's in Zion. This verse is a reminder that God. Is not necessarily distant. Nor is he unknowable. Right? Right? No, in our affliction, we can know that God is present with us. 9-12 When he avenges blood, he remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the humble. So let's look at that first part, when he avenges blood. Because what here is translated as avenges blood could also have easily been translated more literally as seeks blood. The righteous and God's elect will be protected. We will be held up and iniquity 
will not go unchecked by God. Sin will not go unchecked by God's righteous wrath. 917, guys. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Let me read that again to make sure we got it, because it's heavy, guys. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. All right, guys, so the first stanza is clear, and the second, well, the second fleshes it out, don't it? Because it tells us that first on the chopping block is the wicked. And next after that is any and all hard-hearted nations. There will be no room for such things. There will be no place for those that would deny or not follow God. So a verse like this certainly holds weight today amid much calamity in not only the U.S., but many nations abroad. There is unrest near globally and God is the only thing that can take us from that to a place of better uh, a place that is better for us all right guys 920 last one I'm going to share with you today put them in fear O Lord that the nations may know themselves to be but men he's saying check these people God the impact of a nation's fearful God was thought to proceed victorious armies in battle Israel looked for the very splendor of Yahweh to overwhelm to crush and to defeat all opposition alright guys if you're not subscribed smash the subscribe button I drop a new video like this six days a week man and I promise God wants us to do this together guys let's do it um, man give the video a thumbs up if you liked it share it if you loved it if you have any prayer requests any comments guys anything your testimony anything drop it down here into the comment section guys let's make something happen for Jesus man he's too good to us to not do something for him right alright guys I love you he loves you so much more man go out there and have a blessed day y'all